Ladies and gentlemen, he misrepresented the Human Rights Convention. You're supposed to claim refugee status in the first safe country you enter. The moment you leave that country and you carry on traveling, you're no longer a refugee. You, ladies and gentlemen, are an economic migrant or a migrant for some other reason, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Human Rights Convention is not fit for purpose. That's another question. And the state should withdraw from the European Court of Human Rights. That's what we should do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in my final 30 seconds, I want to point out that Israel has the right to defend itself against Hamas murderers who killed thousands of their citizens and declared a war on the people of Israel. There can be no support for Gaza because Gaza is a terrorist state. Yeah, they're not humans because they're brown. Argue with the person in front of you, not with something you want to invent. Go on, bro. They're just going to go on for a couple of. So here we get to an important part of the debate, something many people don't want to debate, particularly those people who march and protest against the so-called asylum seekers and Muslims. And that is, what is the role of Israel in the whole of this saga? What is the role of Israel? And how does it connect in? You brought it in. How does it connect in? Well, firstly, Tommy Robinson is financed by Israel. He's financed by Israel. He said, we were right to attack Afghanistan. How many times have we attacked Afghanistan, by the way? How many times? Once? Twice? Three times? Or is it four times that we've invaded Afghanistan? How many times has Afghanistan invaded Britain? How many? Zero. So I'm just going to wear my voice out. You have to keep going, bro. It's your time. Smoke. The smoke. I, it, no, it's just interrupt my speaking. If, if I don't get it in my in my throat, it doesn't matter. I, c I can feel it. So I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't. I know what it's, it's your I do a walking tour in the morning. I don't want to wear my voice it's out. It's your time, so, brother. Well, well, stop the time. No, 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 stop. don't stop. This is his time. Yeah. What's this? What's it, this? Bro. Childish. Keep it fair. Keep it fair. Raise your voice, man. Raise your voice. You can do it. I do a walking tour in the morning. I've already been speaking for three hours this morning. I appreciate My voice is, if that's going on and I'm speaking, I've been speaking for 30 years. I know my voice is capacity and I'm going to lose my voice if I carry on speaking over that. Your time, so, well, it's childish, it's childish, it's childish, it's childish. You don't actually want a debate. No, no. That's what you're saying. Right. I'm you gonna, want me to I'm lose my voice so you I'm can chat. Well, good for you, but right. I can't do that. Right. So we, I cool. Has ceded his time. Tell me when you're ready. I haven't ceded yeah. my time. Ceded I said, time, oh no, you gentlemen. claimed. So, firstly, we made de a deal wait, 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 about how the how the going? division would be stop organised. Time, now you're saying, no, 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 why shouldn't you stop your time? Because you're why you stop my time? Oh, that's okay then, is it? No one's. So I'm supposed you. to speak over that. I'm about to. Well, so good for you. Good for you. You're a big man. You've got a big voice. Who gives a fuck? Ladies and gentlemen. Now you're being a child. You're being a child because you've lost so many arguments. You're being a child. You're being a child. You Just take it easy, Ladies let them leave, and clear. then get on with it. Move the we can move over there. Because we I can, can move over there with the noises. We can move over there.
Ja, det er det. 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 Ja, det er So if I remember rightly, the argument was, or I was arguing about the role of Israel. So Tommy Robinson initially set up something called the English Defence League. It was a limited company. A little while after he set up the English Defence League, he changed the name to the English and Jewish Defence League. Yes, to the English and Jewish Defence League. It's defunct now, but it shows and he's admitted that he's a Zionist. And he said, you can see the videos online, he says, if there's a war about Israel, I'll go and fight for the Israelis. I'll go and fight for the Israelis. And the whole hysteria around the pro-Palestinian demonstrations, which Bob's joined in with, unfortunately. I don't think he understands what's happening there. And he said that the Palestinians should be effectively slaughtered, wiped out by the Israelis. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Something like 50,000 or more women and children have been slaughtered by the Israeli state, backed by Britain, backed by America, backed by the Western powers, backed by Germany, and unfortunately backed by Bob who I, I will argue simply doesn't understand what's going I hope that's the reason. If he thinks he does understand, that's even more unfortunate. But I'll still debate him. But then, the, let's go back to the facts. Southport riots and the rest of them began around false stories that Muslim immigrants from boats killed three children. A lie. Second, that a Muslim immigrant shouting Allah Akbar had a knife near the scene of the vigil. That was a lie. It was a supporter of Tommy Robinson. And yet, there is no condemnation by Tommy Robinson of the false connection. Instead of this, he doubled down. He doubled down and I seen the videos, I watched them, one after another. Someone said, he always looks like he's been on a bender the night before. <laughs> Some other people said, he always looks like he's taken too much cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> but it's always like, these Muslims come in a fucking country, raping their way around the fucking country. We're not fucking stand for it any fucking more. But I'm not advocating violence. <laughs> nah. Fucking violence, we're no, fucking peaceful. No, we had Bob on the platform no, a few weeks back. No, fucking no, peaceful. No. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I wondered how long the Jews would get blamed. How long did it take a George Galloway supporter to bring the Jews into the question? Did I the Jews? He mentioned, he mentioned about the state of Israel and about Palestine. What has that got to do with what's happening here? Nothing, ladies and gentlemen. And it's Jewish got nothing league. to do English with what's happening. There you go, he mentioned the Jews. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll advance my argument because I want to progress the argument. I'm not interested in his side debate about defending Hamas terrorism. What I'm interested in is pointing out, ladies and gentlemen, that the working class's other legitimate complaint is about two-tier policing. I'll give you some examples. We've had people arrested because they have given out false information. But has Nick Hoyles from Hope Not Hate been arrested when he gave out false information about a Muslim woman receiving an acid attack? Remember when Haiku went on the demonstration in Clapham about the, is it Sarah Everard? I don't want to get her yeah, name right. The murder of Sarah Everard, yeah. By a yeah, the, the murdered lady Sarah, Sarah Everard. The murder and burning of a woman. Yes, a legitimate complaint, ladies and gentlemen. No doubt about it. 
but they argued that they were receiving maltreatment from the police. Why is it middle class women from Clapham can talk about maltreatment from the police, but working class lads can't complain about two tier policing when three of their children have just been butchered? Why the double standards of the Clapham Islington elite, ladies and gentlemen? And if he continues to heckle me, I will heckle him, but he'll complain because my voice is louder. So make your choice, Haiku, whether you want me to heckle or not. Right. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, we all remember about the Black Lives Matter riots. When that statue was torn down, or when those assaults occurred upon the police, or when there was the attempt to burn the flag at the cenotaph, or when there was attempted murder outside a Waterloo station. Did anyone remember Keir Starmer coming out and saying that these rioters must be met with a full force of the law? No. What did he do? He bent the knee. The working classes have the right to complain about two-tier policing because it exists, ladies and gentlemen, and no one should take away their right to raise their voice about an apartheid system. A good friend of mine asked me a few weeks back, or a couple of weeks back, is there two-tier policing in England? I said, no, there's multi-tier policing. When there were lockdown protests, I was arrested seven times. Were you arrested, Bob? I don't think so. Seven times I was arrested. Piers was arrested 14 times. They explicitly targeted me on those protests. They targeted me for defending the right to speak at Speaker's Corner, the right for the Muslims, the Christians, and anyone to speak at Speaker's Corner. That was a ferocious attack on the anti-lockdown protests. And yes, there was less of an attack on BLM. There are different policing tactics in different circumstances. What is really behind, what one, let me point out one thing that happened here at Speaker's Corner. Just before the second lockdown happened, I was speaking just about here, and the government were beginning to impose tighter and tighter restrictions. They said to us, we can only meet in groups of six, and only 30 people are allowed in a larger group. And so I said, I went round to all the speakers, including Bob, and I said, well, what we'll do is we'll say to everyone, you can be six people only and keep a distance and we'll continue speaking. And then we're not breaking the rules. Bob said, oh, I'll think about it. But he didn't do it. OK, that's his right. Then what happened was, as I was speaking, the weekend before the second lockdowns, beginning of November 2020, a huge group of police, marched into the park, about 60 or 70 of them, possibly 100, marched into the park and in the middle of the group were about 50 people and in the centre of those people was Tommy Robinson. And he came over there where the Koran sign is there and he handed over some chocolates to Hatun, Hatun Tash. Uh, and then I went over there and I spoke opposite Tommy Robinson, and I said, because we've had a little bit of history together, I said to him, why did you lie on television the previous time when your mates attacked me and physically assaulted me at Speaker's Corner after you had explicitly called, in 2019 I believe it was, explicitly called for communists and Marxists to defend free speech at Speaker's Corner? And yet I stood next to him and his people attacked me and physically assaulted me. It's all online, you can see it. Then I went over there to ask him why. And what happened? I was physically attacked and then I was arrested. Then, 20 minutes after this, after having marched Tommy Robinson into the park, he was then arrested. I ended up in the police station in Wandsworth and Tommy Robinson came into... The, I'll tell you more about that in a short while. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying the debate. This is how it's meant to be done. But I want to thank Haiku for admitting my second point. So now we have two admissions from Haiku. Firstly, there is a problem of illegal migration to this country. 
in the tens of thousands, town after town's worth every year. And secondly, there are two-tier policing, multi-tier policing, as Haiku pointed out to you all. So in other words, the working classes who are protesting have a legitimate cause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Haiku. I believe that the debate is coming to an end and you're losing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Why is it coming to an end? let's be clear. Let's be clear. The working classes are being subject to different kinds of policing. As a Christian, I am committed biblically to the idea of equality under the law. It's taught in the Old Testament that foreigner and native should be treated the same under the law. So actually, ladies and gentlemen, as a Christian, I would argue for more rights for those who are legitimate refugees to this country. I would argue for more rights for those who are staying here on other kinds of visas than the liberal establishment does. Because as a principle, I believe in equality under the law. How many more? However, ladies and gentlemen, Haiku has not argued against the working classes who are arguing against two-tier policing. One can only agree, therefore, that Haiku agrees with them, which means that we are both in agreement that the working classes have a legitimate cause for protest. I am not going to try to attempt uh, or be fooled into defending violence. But since we're talking about violence and Tommy Robinson and Hatun Tash, let's just remind you what happened. Hatun Tash, who is a Christian and a convert from Islam, in this park, a Muslim attempted to kill her in a terrorist attack. Yeah, not that time. The media did not cover it. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know if that migrant came here illegally or even if he is a migrant. Whether he came here legally or illegally or whether he was born here. But what we do know is that there are groups of people in this country that don't share the same Judeo-Christian values as the rest of us and it is not wrong to point that out. Amen. So as a continuation from the last story, because it connects together, when Tommy Robinson was marched into the park by the police the week before, the weekend before the second lockdown, which was the harshest lockdown we experienced. Immediately after that, the government imposed draconian controls over free speech, over assembly, and they used the conflict that broke out in Hyde Park that afternoon as an excuse to do so. I put it to you that the events which have happened in the last few weeks have been instigated by the state in order to impose draconian controls over the entire population. That is what is actually behind what's going on. And by the way, they've been trying for months on end to portray the protests against genocide in Gaza as hate marches. Yes. The government, the opposition, the ministers, the legal system, the mass media, hate marches, hate marches, hate marches. Yet I went on one demonstration after another. Not a single bit of violence. Many Jews on the demonstrations. Many Jews, honest Jews fighting against Zionism and the tyranny that is being imposed by the Zionists, not only on the people of Palestine, but also outside of, of Israel. Don't forget, Jeremy Corbyn was once leader of the Labour Party. He was removed by an orchestrated campaign by the Zionists to remove him from power of the Labour Party. And in Britain, the reason why Stephen Yaxley Robinson Lennon. is supported to such a degree. Why was it possible for him, after the rally he held, 
where he pretended, oh my God, I'm so innocent, look at my video. And then he disappeared out of the border. And when he was arrested, he said, oh, I'm arrested under terrorism. He was due in court the next morning. The next morning, they released him 10 o'clock at night. And yet he was given permission by the state, that same state that's so draconian now, given permission by the state to leave the country, even though he was due in court the next day. When the court case was heard, the court turned around and said, here's an arrest warrant delayed until October. Wow. I put it to you that sections of the state are using Tommy Robinson as an agent to impose draconian controls and divide the population, divide the working classes of this country. I love Haiku because he always sides with me in every debate. He's just said that it is the state that instigated the riots. If it was the state, it's not Tommy Robinson. If Tommy Robinson is a pawn, then that means the state is to blame if Haiku's thesis is correct. But remember, he wants to blame Tommy Robinson, who he's just called a pawn. No, ladies and gentlemen, I want to point out something. If Haiku can demonstrate to me, or if any of you can, or if anyone can, show to me where Tommy Robinson calls for violence, I will condemn Tommy Robinson and call for his arrest. Can't say fairer than that, can you? Let me be clear. Let me be clear. I don't remember the likes of Haiku standing up for my community over the grooming gangs. But I do remember Tommy Robinson standing up for my community over the grooming gangs. Until the day I die, or until Tommy Robinson really goes outside of the bounds, I will always be grateful for what he did for my community, ladies and gentlemen. Now, once again, Haiku wants to bring the Jews into it. Once again, he wants to bring Palestine into it. That's not the debate, ladies and gentlemen. I want to advance the argument further, since we have established that uncontrolled immigration is a problem, since we have established that there is two-tier policing, and since we have established that Tommy Robinson is not responsible for the riots, I want to advance another argument. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the Robinson? fact is the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that the globalist agenda supported by Haiku is destructive to the cultures of the world. It is destructive to our culture. Our culture that was built on Christianity, that was built on Christendom, that was built on biblical principles Amen. and upon the teachings of the church. Our culture, ladies and gentlemen, that gave us a sense of right and wrong. Let me ask you a question. Put your hand up. Are you against child marriage? Are you against slavery? Yes. Yeah, Are you against killing apostates? Yes. Notice he didn't raise his hand once. Oh, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that is the problem of the globalist left, is that they have a blind spot to the dangers of Islamization. Right, we need to find a different timer before you start. Can I just we, no, no, we need to find a different timer. This brother's got to go. Need time. Could someone need time? time. Has anyone? She's a good timer. She's the queen of timing. Go on, sister. She'll do it. Time. She'll do it. It's three minutes. Uh, and at 20 seconds before, give us a wave. It's his phone. He's going. <laughs> Come on, sister. Okay. So has Tommy Robinson opposed grooming gangs? Yes. Did he oppose the grooming 
or better said the paedophiles inside the EDL? No. Many of them were exposed. He didn't do anything about it. Nothing. Now, Bob complains about, is it Muslim grooming gangs, did you say? Yes. Muslim grooming gangs, right? Now, there are grooming gangs. In other words, there's sexual exploitation of children, rape, whatever. Terrible thing. Muslim grooming gangs, is that organized by the, by the imam, by the mosque? Or is it just people who happen to be born as many white people in Britain, as you say, from the Judeo-Christian tradition? Some people from Pakistan who abuse children and who are taking drugs, drinking. They're clearly not really Muslims. So you're just calling them Muslim because they happen to be Pakistani. So then I ask you this. If they are Muslim grooming gangs, according to that definition, what the f*** are the Catholics who in Ireland, in America, in Britain, the Catholic Church, over decades and centuries, sexually abused children, systematically, year in, year out, millions of children in Britain, millions of children in America, millions of children in Ireland. And by the way, I saw Tommy Robinson post a couple of days ago that the Iraqis are passing a law that you can get married at nine years of age. Terrible thing, I agree, terrible thing. I posted underneath to help him along. I posted underneath. Do you know it is legal in parts of the United States of America to get married to a 10 year old? Did you know that? Did you know there are over 130,000 child marriages in America? The United States of America. Do you hear them talking about that? Do you hear Tommy going upon about the rape of children in America? You do not. In other words, it is explicitly focused to whip up hatred against Muslims, the objective of which is to divide the working class one against another. He says he defends the working class. He does not. He wants to divide the working class on religious lines. That's the problem. As well, as well. Yes, as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you, what sense does it make for working class people in England to protest about child marriages in America? No sense at all. But does it make sense for those working class people to call out, to cry out, to complain against Muslim grooming gangs operating in their communities? And the reference was Iraq, though. The reference was of Iraq. Of course it does. But notice how the globalist replies. Globally. Notice how the Labour the, the, the socialist replies. He replies by pointing anywhere but at the problem. And that is why the working classes have a legitimate complaint. Now he throws at my door a truth. I do wish to divide the world according to the teachings of Christ. And I am not ashamed. Because Christ himself said, I have not come to bring peace. But war, the sword, the sword against the sword. Thank you. To turn father against son and daughter against mother. Do you know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because truth always divides. There are always those who stand on the truth, and there are always those who oppose the truth. And right now, Haiku and the Champagne Socialists like him are standing against the truth. They are standing against the truth of Hamas terrorism. They're standing against the truth of Muslim grooming gangs. They're standing against the truth of two-tier policing. They're standing against the truth of the oppression of the working classes economically, socially and politically. Why? Because Haiku and Champagne socialists like him don't represent working classes to the world, they represent middle class views to the working classes. That's where he's coming from. The divide is not based on ethnicity. The divide 
is not based on nationality. <coughs> the divide is between integralists and internationalists, ladies and gentlemen. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, I want him to address the problem of Islamization within multiculturalism. I'll give him a chance again to speak out against Sharia laws, justification of slavery, child marriage and apostasy. Let's see if he has the balls to come on this stage and condemn and stand against those Islamic teachings. I mean, I remember when I was about 20, I started reading the Bible. <clears throat> The Bible is full of paedophilia. Absolutely. Full of it. Absolutely. Full of it. Do you deny that? Yes. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. The Bible is full of paedophilia. It is. Show us one verse. I will. Next week I'll bring you a whole raft. I don't have Next a Bible week. on me. There. Rachel. It doesn't. How it doesn't, old was she? It doesn't say. How old? There are people of nine and ten he years of age have a Bible. being being raped. Being raped. Show us one verse. Show us. One verse. Show us. He's telling it. Okay. Show okay. Us. I don't know the Bible inside out. Oh. But for Bob, I, but I tell you this. I tell you this. For Bob to deny there is paedophilia in the Bible shows he's, he's a liar. He's a liar because there's masses of it. Now it's true. He's not advocating it. And there are some people in Islam who might think it's legitimate, as the Iraqi government, for example, is trying to agree, that a nine-year-old can get married. To which I replied, not about Britain. I said, Tommy posted a post about Iraq. Nine-year-olds getting married in Iraq. To which I replied, in America, you can get married in some states at 10. Right? So, there was the direct reference. And by the way, the Iraqi government ended up being as barbaric as it is because Britain went there twice and bombed the smithereens and the humanity out of the people. That's the reality. So, then I went back. I have to keep repeating. I don't know why I have to, we're supposed to be debating and advancing an argument. I said, in the Catholic Church, there are millions of cases of paedophilia, historically. Pedof and this was going on for decades, recent decades. I haven't heard a word from Tommy and his supporters condemning that. Now, I condemn any grooming gangs if run by Pakistanis or if they were run by Muslims, but I also condemn paedophilia gangs which are Catholic or Protestant or any other religious group. It's paedophilia and grooming gangs that are a problem, not a specific religious group. You, oh, sorry, have I done that? Uh, not a specific religious group. He says he's against internationalism and then he says he wants the whole world to be Christian. You can't be both. You can't want the whole world Christian living under God and say you don't believe in internationalism. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to point out that no Catholic attempts to defend the paedophilia of the Catholic priests. Nobody, nobody. And if you want to argue that they do, bring forth your evidence. Let me see them saying that paedophilia is okay. But I have documented evidence in this park of Muslim after Muslim defending sex with children. Why do they do it, ladies and gentlemen? Because their books teach that you can. Muhammad, the greatest example that has ever lived according to the Muslim religion, married a child at six and had sex with her at nine. No, ladies and gentlemen. Haiku has claimed that there's paedophilia in the Bible. Here's his chance to prove it. She was 10 when she was uh, in Cable in the 1970s. That shows paedophilia in the Bible. Furthermore, 
ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear, not all Muslims follow Islamic teaching. Indeed, many Muslims are better than their prophet and agree with us on things like sex with children is wrong and slavery is wrong. But notice, notice, Haiku's response to the challenge is simply to point the finger somewhere else. Why? Because as a liberal internationalist, he is unwilling to accept the reality that not all religions teach the same. My Christian faith doesn't teach the same as his liberal secular humanism. And America follows a liberal secular constitution. In other words, America is closer to his worldview than mine. He hasn't challenged the Islamic slave trade. Let me ask him, should we, should we oppose basic Islamic practices like the taking and buying and selling of slaves? Is it time? Should we do that? Because if he's not willing to come on this platform and say yes, then he is an apologist for such things. Now they say they're li I'm lying. So why did Muhammad give a slave as a gift to his daughter Fatima? Why did Muhammad sell one, exchange one Arab slave for two black slaves? These are the realities of Muhammad's life, who is the best example. There is a problem when you argue with someone who wants to reference crimes in relation to Allah in, or, or sorry, in relation to uh, Muhammad, when was it, 1400? You know, was there slavery in the Islamic states? Yes. Was there slavery in the 1850s in America? Was there slavery organized by the British? So what are we talking about? That wasn't even just, you know, there's that guy, Newsom. You go to St. Mary's Church at Bank Station. And that's where he invented the song, you know. Uh, was it Amazing Grace? Amazing. He was a slave owner, a slave trader. So, you know, this is historical fact. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, debate this from Allah or from from the Quran or from um, uh, what Muhammad did or didn't do. If you're fundamentalist in looking at your Bible, you'll know the Old Testament and the Quran are pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. There's plenty of stoning of women in the Bible. There's plenty of paedophilia in the Bible. There's, there's plenty of murder in the Bible. But of course you're saying that Christ changed all that. Okay, that's your privilege. But it didn't prevent Christians under Christianity for centuries in carrying out the barbarities that you're attributing to Islam. So is it a weighing of equation, a weighing of equation, which is what I've been arguing all afternoon. How do we weigh it up? How do we assess what's happening? Here we have the murderers and scum, the gentleman says. But the fact of the matter is, people in Nigeria Are the three the three children the three children that led to the riots the killing of them had nothing to do with people from boats had nothing to do with Islam had nothing to do with religion at all as far as we can make out and so why can you tolerate and support the whipping up of hatred around this issue. And why are some people doing that? I put it to you again, on contrary to what, what Bob has accused me of, that people in power internationally, in particular Israel and the Israel lobby, are trying to whip up conflict in Britain. Chess board. How is that not racist? 
ladies and gentlemen. It's a religion, not a race. How is that not racist? It's a religion, not now, a race. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, he demonstrates the very problem in liberal internationalist thinking. Liberal internationalist thinking cannot recognize, does not recognize the differences between religions. As a religious studies student, it was my academic privilege to study multiple religions. And I want to tell you, they're not the same. And anyone who tells you that they are, is insulting Muslims and Christians and Hindus and Sikhs and Jews and every other religion. Because they don't teach the same, they don't have the same values, they don't have the same outlook. This is the kind of ignorance that comes from a secular, humanist, atheist perspective. The Old Testament, though. No? That is lazy Not thinking. Common, no. Now he's repeated again the, Old the charge. The Old Testament. That in the Old Testament, paedophilia is No, no, I didn't say that. I said it's the same. I want him same to as show Islam. me a single verse. I will do that. Because right now, ladies and gentlemen, he is dealing in stereotypes. He is dealing in ignorance. He is dealing in misinformation. But when the left-wing internationalist does it, it's okay. And that is at the heart of the issue. When the Clapham do it, when the Clapham Islington group do it, everyone should fall in line with the narrative. But anyone coming from a council estate in Leeds, or in Rotherham, or in Sheffield, or in Lancaster, or in Manchester, no, you don't get a voice. You don't get to point out the dangers of Islamization. And if you do, you're a racist. But I think that encouraging and allowing more and more people who have values that are in support of slavery, child marriage, dimitude, which is a religious apartheid, apostasy laws, amongst many other things like smacking women, beating your wife, that that has a detrimental effect on our society and we don't need to tolerate it. It is right to speak out against it, and people like him make themselves the useful idiots of Islamists. Sorry, where, where in the Quran uh, It does actually. In some parts it does. Yeah, it does. I'm sure it does in the Bible as well, but we'll leave that. Um, I'm 60 years of age. When I went to school in South London, when I was a child in South London, it was standard to beat the children by the teachers. We got beatings every day. Beatings every day. Cane or slipper. And otherwise the teacher would whack us around the head. I had a friend went to a public school. The public school was run by a group of paedophiles, all of whom claimed they're Christians. All who, Eton, Harrow, paedophile cases, all of whom who claimed they're Christians. Does that make them Christian grooming gangs? Not in my opinion. It makes them grooming gangs in schools, utilizing the opportunity provided to them by their access to children to abuse them. That's what it is. I don't think it was religion. There are religious elements to some, in particular, to the history of the Catholic child abuse cases. And you can look at that in the Boston scandal. They paid 400 million in compensation. And that was next to nothing compared with the crimes they committed against those children. So, we're getting lots of red herrings thrown up again and again. I, as I said again, I repeat, Bob said he wants everyone in the world to become Judeo-Christian, right? Yeah. Yes. If everyone's in the world becomes Judeo-Christian, surely we live under the rule of Christ. Amen. And the rule of Christ is not divided by nations. No, no, it's more complicated than that. Oh, it is, is it? It is, yes. Is it going to be based in England or...? Do you want me to answer that question? Well, okay, never mind, never mind. Okay, so it's going to be based on nations, so you're going to have different rules of Christ in different countries. Correct. The laws will be different, the Correct. regulations will be different. Correct. In other words, you'll be able to believe in something that's nothing to do with what Bob believes, and therefore his belief... Sorry? Wrong. Oh, we'll all have to agree with you then. No. I see. I see. That's what it is. So you are the new 
Christ. No. Everyone will follow what you say in Christianity. He's science, that's Dr. Fauci. I am the science, that's right. And I return to this false flag that I'm, that's raised against me about being an inter-globalist. Globalist. The global tyranny imposed on the world in the name of lockdowns. I was completely opposed to that. I am still opposed to the tyrannical attempts to use those type of uh, measures to control the people. And I put it to you that the whipping up of hatred between Muslims and Christians or between working class white people and Muslims is part of the same agenda. Absolutely. He's a world brilliant public So, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm not going to fall into the trap of trying to defend anyone who's whipping up hatred. That isn't what's on debate here. I do is correct. No one should be doing that as a Christian. I'm against that. But, ladies and gentlemen, notice that he didn't address the thesis that I proposed to you. Here's the thesis again. I'll try and lay it out in slow, erudite language for you. And maybe you can keep up with the argument I do. <laughs> if you advocate for a multicultural society in which people can embody and embrace values and beliefs that legitimize slavery, child marriage, the killing of apostates, a religious apartheid. If you support that system, you are an enabler of Islamists. You are a useful idiot to Islamists. And every liberal secularist like Haiku is a useful idiot. Let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why our government will not control illegal immigration or control or filter legal immigration is because of abortion. If you kill tens of thousands of your own children, you have to replace those same ten thousands of people. Why? Because the globalist elite, that haiku is the useful idiot for, see all of you as just a, what, a GDB point on a spreadsheet. And the country needs GDP points. And so they sell a lie to us that uncontrolled mass immigration and even legal mass immigration improves the economy. It doesn't. What it does is it creates wage deflation on poor communities. What it does is it creates competition for low-based work that working class people born in this country are the ones that usually would fill and now they're competing with migrants from with low education ladies and gentlemen the narrative that is being created by haiku is a useful idiot's narrative for the very elites that he claims to be against and leads to the very oppression of the working classes that he claims to be against do you want to keep going I'm yeah, yeah, yeah 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 particularly now well i'm gonna have to go in okay okay no with us do one more. Yeah, let's do one more. One more each. Yeah, yeah one more round. Okay. So, um, hang on, one more each, meaning what? Me, you. You started, so I'll finish. What? Oh, did I? Yeah, you. you oh, okay, you're right, you're right, you're yeah, right, you're right. So okay, okay. So, start so now. Is this the last one? Is this the last one each? Or do you want one more round and then the last one? Up to you, what time you've got. All right, let's do one more round and then the last one. Okay, so we got okay. Two. okay. So, we've got two more speeches each. So, I'm very pleased. The Bob has now moved on to the question of what I would call the labour theory of value. And the labour theory of value basically postulates that labour is mobilised by capital to suit their interests. That's why the wave of what you call migration at the Windrush, when they woke Enoch Powell, used to go out inviting people from the Caribbean to come to England to work. I've got here something funny, funny that you raised this. 
because that's where we've gone to. This is an article from 1845 by Frederick Engels, and it's about Irish migration to Britain. I quote you, this is from the condition of the working class in England, 1845. It has been calculated that more than a million have already immigrated Irish to England. And not far from 50,000 come every year, nearly all of whom enter the industrial districts, especially the great cities. They form the lowest class of the population. There are in London 120,000, in Manchester 40,000, in Liverpool 34,000. These people having grown up almost without civilization, accustomed from youth to every sort of privation, rough, intemperate and improvident, bring all their brutal habits with them amongst the class of the English population, which has, in truth, little inducement to cultivate education and, mor and morality. In other words, as we know, Tommy Robinson has an Irish passport. He's from Irish stock. He's an Irish-backed immigrant. He's an Irish-originated immigrant. Good. So stop condemning immigrants, because you are one. And you are one of these who are condemned as intemperate, immoral, uneducated, uncultured, as you are trying, and Tommy Robinson and co are trying to turn against all Muslims based upon a set of grooming gangs amongst a group of Pakistan or mostly Pakistani grooming gangs, ignoring every other Catholic, Christian or other grooming gang and folk or even EDL paedophiles and turning instead against the Muslim working classes to divide the workers one against another to help the elite to control the world. Of helping refugees. As a Christian, I can't have any other belief. The very idea of being a Christian is to support the idea of refugees. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is whether, I'll remind you what the debate was at the very beginning, the current situation. I am not advocating that people turn against migrants. My sister here is a migrant. She, I would never wish any harm on her. My brother here is a migrant. Haiku knows that I hang around with migrants. I've helped refugees in this country. This is not about uh, one ethnicity versus another, or whether it's migrants versus natives, that's the lie that people like Haiku want to spread. Why do they want to spread that lie? Because they want to deny the voice of working class people to speak up about what they are suffering in terms of two-tier policing, in terms of having mass migration chucked onto their communities and the problems that it causes, ladies and gentlemen, or of having their culture and their identity stripped away by the very globalist elite that he serves because he's too idiotic to see that he is actually defending globalism in our country. If you're not in favour of the globalist elite, support the imposition of borders and the re-establishment of a southern border. Ladies and gentlemen, he spreads lies about the Christian faith, but then accuses me of lying about Muslims. When I've never lied about Muslims, I've just criticised Islam, something he has failed to do. Okay. okay, so this is the last three minutes. I'll try and recap. The migrants arriving in Britain on boats are mostly from countries that Britain, America, NATO and its allies bombed to smithereens and destroyed. The boats coming from Libya 
were after Britain instigated a coup d'etat in Libya with armed gangs financed and supported by the British state. That doesn't mean Bob. It doesn't mean Tommy Robinson. It means the British state and the military. We sent 12 billion pounds to escalate the war in Ukraine. 12 billion. Total migration costs in Britain, 4 billion. We sent 12 billion to Ukraine to jack up the war. And you're paying electricity, gas, higher prices, as are the working classes who are being whipped up, some of the white working classes in the poorest communities, whipped up against Muslims. And was the Muslim accusation right? It wasn't a Muslim who killed the children, and it wasn't a Muslim who was found with a knife. So given that, surely, and they all wished it was, you're correct, surely Tommy Robinson, Andrew Tate, and Bob should have retracted and said, look, this is not on. This is hysteria. This is madness. But that madness has a root, I do not deny. And that root lies in the fact that the global capitalist elite, and in particular Israel, who are slaughtering tens of thousands, not three children, tens of thousands of children since October last year. Yesterday, 90 people killed in a school by Israel. And only last week, Israeli government officials were cheering and demanding the right to rape male prisoners inside Israel, male Palestinians who they've captured, the right to rape them. That was supported by large layers of the Israeli population and the Israeli state. Is that good? No, it's a descent to barbarism. So I'm asking you, think what you're doing. Take a step back, move away from the lunacy and seek to unify, unify. Go to the Muslims. Discuss with them without the clash, without the fight. Discuss with them. About, Debate with them. About Nigeria. Organise together and combine the working classes from below. So, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard Haiku talk about the genocide of Christians in Nigeria? No. Have you heard Haiku? There is not a genocide of Christians, Christians in Nigeria. In That's Pakistan bullshit. Pakistan who are having their churches bombed? No. no. Did you hear Haiku stand up for the Christians of Syria who suffered a genocide under Islamists? No. no. Why? Because Haiku, like so many in our liberal society, are slaves to the internationalist media. He can only see what the internationalist media tell him to see. And he is not equal in his condemnation or for all in standing up for persecuted Christians in every single Islamic country in the entire world without a single exception. Not one, not Malaysia, not Indonesia, no, silence, not the, not, um, the Mauritius Islands, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Algeria, Egypt, where just a few weeks ago there was an anti-Christian pogrom. What is it, Haiku? Are the lives of black Christians not worthy of the same of Gazan Muslims? Are Palestinian Christians no, not worth it? Ladies and gentlemen, are Palestinian Christians not worth anything? Clear where I stand. I support the Christians wherever they are in the world, and that includes in Gaza. There you go. But you know who persecutes the Christians in Gaza, as well as Israel. And notice the left is supporting as well as Israel. As well as Israel. Hamas persecutes the Christians of Gaza. Hamas and he is silent Bethlehem. about Hamas's persecution. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. We Christians. The bombing of Bethlehem. No lecture from the socialists. 
We Christians are the ones that are standing with the poor and the oppressed. The socialist here is standing with middle class women in Clapham. The same middle class women in Clapham who are right now calling working class lads across this country as racists and bigots. Here's what the working class need. They need people to side with them who can articulate their concerns, help them in terms of resources, so that they can channel their anger in a way that is democratic and peaceful. The violence that we have seen on our streets is condemnable, and I do condemn it, and I don't want to repeat, but they need the means to articulate their sufferings in a world that doesn't want to listen. Thank you.